All right. So, 2014 is coming to a close. Sad. And so and sad. Yeah. What a year for movies. I and guess. Things. Yeah, I know. Things I, happen. I would say, yeah. It's good, it was, good it was year. a good year. It was a good year. Um, so, we're going to talk about some movies that we haven't had the chance to talk about in previous episodes. And then at the end, we're going to talk about the future. The future. The future. Yeah, what good. is that? Oh, that's in the Amazing Spider Man. To trailer when they're like, "What's this?" and he's like, "The future." <laughs> and you just, see, you, just see, you just see eels in the tank, like the future. <laughs> eels, electric eels are the future of science. Yeah. Of course. All right. So, right. 2014. Cool. One of my favorite movies, the Lego Movie. The Lego Movie. The Lego so movie. good. Yeah, I think we can all agree that it was a great film. Yeah, Paul Gi- Paul Giamatti steals the proof. <laughs> yes. obviously. Of yeah. course, that goes without saying. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was just really well done. Like, I, and I, I was a big fan of Legos as a kid, and when they came out, I'm like, my, my mental mindset was like, oh, they're making a Lego movie. Like, it's like those Lego video games, you know, like, to just cash yeah. in on the brand. But right. it was, it was amazing. Like, I kind of, also, I mean, Lego's a bigger name than, uh, you know, certain board games, but I thought it was going to be, like, Battleship, where it's like, what's the, what's even the point of taking the name? But then, like, you see, it really is, like, the Lego movie. And what's cool about it, like, about kids who played with Legos who are, like, now, you know, in their 20s like us, is that everything about Legos in that movie is kind of, like, I, do you know what I mean? It's everything is, like, uh, yeah, like the craggle. It's, like, they're all, like, references to, like, Lego kids, culture. To, almost. like, Lego culture. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for it's to- it totally is. using it's like, words that I couldn't... It's like a love letter to Lego made by Lego. It's kind of yeah. weird when you think of it that way. But, like, it really, like, was not a cash-in. I mean, they made a lot of money. Of course. Yeah. So uh, They deserved it. Deserved it. it. Yeah. Well deserved. <laughs> they, earned, they earned their money. They earned, they earned that. their money. Yeah. And the movie is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I'm just, I've never seen an animated movie that looked like that. You know? Yeah, Like, all great. the characters looked like... Legos, they all moved like Legos. There was so much stuff that looked like it was like handmade stop motion, but it it wasn't. wasn't. It was, but like they put, but you know, it still goes to show they put in the effort to like make sure everything looked like Legos. Yeah, yeah. it was really impressive. They I, like there are some things they could have just not like water. Or they could have easily made it fire. like like, oh, yeah. like you were stuff. saying Lego video games. All those games are essentially the same thing, and they have the cutscenes where they you know remake famous movie scenes like they could have just done that yeah that would have that could have been the lego movie but they didn't and it, and, really, and that, it really stood out and that's why i was kind of scared because like i knew i knew from like the trailer and stuff that there were all these different characters like batman's in it and you know gandalf's in it and like all these and all dumbledore these, yeah <coughs> dumbledore um and i thought like oh they're just gonna like mash together and like make reference like bad references to to like other stuff uh, what was that there's some movie i was watching the other day and like all the comedy was just like, oh, the Rugrats movie. That was it. Like it was just all the jokes in that thing are like references that are like misquoted by babies because they don't know what the references are. Yeah, they don't know how to speak properly. So all the, every joke in you, I, in you the watched movie, the Rugrats movie the other day. Uh, or um, Matt Matt Viola had it on or someone. Ah, and I just like came upstairs. <laughs> don't say that name. It's gonna curse the video. Oh no, <laughs> it's breaking. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know, Matt Viola has a curse. Or he also has a television show, and every time he tries to film, things just explode. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like it, it could have just been like references and like doing sort of satirical mock, uh, yeah. you know, references to other movies and genres or whatever. And but they didn't. They made a, a very unique story. A unique story. Yeah. Charming. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Charming is the word I think. Yeah, absolutely. Had, like, definitely my, had my a parents, message. My parents really liked the Lego movie, and like, not that they—they're old people. <laughs> they, not that they have like bad taste or anything, but it's like if you can make a movie for kids and then the adults love it too, just as much. Like my mom quotes it, you know, yeah. like that you made something. My really niece successful. and nephew both love it, so there's the opposite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, uh, I, so a, tr- a true, uh, yeah, a true movie where it's like, you know, for a general audience, everyone will enjoy it. Yeah. It's not like a kids' movie where like the parents sort of, because usually with a kids' movie it's like 
it's a kids movie. Yeah. And then you throw in some references and stuff for the parents so that they're slightly entertained. Yeah. And like it goes over the kids' heads. So Absolutely. There's yeah. so much stuff. Like <laughs> Disney movies do that a lot. Like the yeah. the whole idea of the, the Octan Corporation. It's like the when um Emmett is like rolling through all the things that they own, he's like, Oh, they own the voting machines and I'm like Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it's nice. horrible. Yeah. They live in like this oppressive society yeah. and it's just like so beautiful and wonderful. Exactly. Everything is awesome. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's, it's it's if that isn't a sign of like the movie yeah. like thematically and it actually being awesome. It, it's super yeah. self aware because, like, like I, uh, that song, for example, it's like, it's it's making it's directly making fun of like catchy pop music, but also being catchy well, pop music. While also being super catchy. Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's, it's brilliant. Like, it's like actually a great song. Yeah, though. it's amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and that's what that's what's so clever. It's like they're you know, for for a kids movie, you know, it's an animated film. Yeah. Like you know, it, it's very clever. Yeah. All all the parts Absolutely. of the story and all the you know. And, you know, I think uh, a lot of people got behind this movie. Like, just look at the, the cast. Yeah, all the voice acting. All, yeah. So many people yeah. in the movie. More, uh, Morgan Freeman, Chris Pratt, uh, Liam Neeson, yeah. Will Ferrell. Banks, Will Fa- obviously, Will Ferrell. Yeah. yeah. Um, even, uh, you know, the I, I don't know if you want to call it a twist. Oh, but where Will Ferrell actually Will shows Ferrell up. Spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers for the Lego movie. Should have seen the Lego movie. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, I never know. We'll but I remember the first time I saw the movie, I watched it with my niece and nephew. And the part was like about to happen where it went to like real life. Yeah. And like right before it happens, my nephew goes, This part's weird. And, <laughs> and then I just remember like, this this is where the movie turns from like kids really like this movie to like I and I thought like that was the most amazing part of the movie and my nephew's like this part's weird <laughs> and yeah. I was like oh my god like, it, it broke the fourth wall for him and like yeah. he just you know, and it's like it's just like this is too real this yeah. is too real like he embraced the universe like he just accepted it and then yeah. and then you're like oh no this isn't real you know. Yeah. It's like it's like the ending of Blazing Saddles, right? Like all the walls are falling down. <laughs> yeah. and it's spilling and over. It was kind yeah, of actually. Also amazing. It really reminded me of the SpongeBob movie too. Yeah, when yeah, they, when they yeah. go on land. Yeah. And Alexander Clam. No. <laughs> yeah, it's exact. I'd say that's probably the closest comparison. Is is that the SpongeBob was, movie? What was the name of? Like oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Where they're entering David like. Yeah. No, the Shell City. Shell City. Yeah, Shell yeah. City. yeah. It, 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 it you know it breaks the it's like that's the real world and it's like it, it goes from animation to like mm-hmm. live action and and I I love that and I I could see yeah. kids being a bit like like what's happening like because so, again it's going over their head a bit like the idea that like you know, right it, it talks about the greater like 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 I said Lego culture right but that's what that. I think is amazing is Will Ferrell's like I know it looks like kids stuff. But the way <laughs> I'm using it is in an adult way. <laughs> and he's like, put that, you bought it at the toy store. <laughs> uh, I, could, I could go and quote it in that movie for yeah. But uh, I, I think, yeah, Paul Giamatti seal approval. Yeah. Everyone loves it. Um, go see it. One more it. note. Uh, they, they do plan on making a sequel. Of course. Yes. Do I was we think that's that a great idea? They're making a few sequels. They're making Lego Batman with the... With Will Arnett's character, and they're right. trying to get all the Batmans from yeah movies past into that one movie, which is oh, kind okay. of ambitious. Yeah, and then uh, pretty cool, right? then they're doing Lego Movie Two, which is like the writers are the same, the writers from the first movie uh-huh. are the same, but it's going to be a different director, which is like okay, okay, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I really like the last line in the Lego movie when Will Ferrell's like, now that I'm letting you play here, I'm going to have to let your sister, and then the Duplos come down, and the Duplos in like the most like innocent childlike voice is like, we come from the planet Duplos, and we're here to destroy you. <laughs> like, what? It's, it's so the, crazy. Oh, it's just ridiculous. And the movie ends. <laughs> It's, incredible. It's, it's a lead into the dystopian future of the <laughs> yeah, second of the, movie. D- yeah. Duplo Overlord. Yeah. Duplo Overlord. No, that would be amazing. That's but, uh, yeah, Writers, take that down. But, but uh, <laughs> I know you're watching. Uh, just another note off of that. The directors of the Lego movie did the Jump Street movies. Really? Wow. So yeah. for me, 
like this year was like totally their year with Lego Movie and Twenty Two Jump, Jump Street. Street. What did you, what did you think another, of that movie just briefly? Twenty Two Jump Street. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, you liked it. Okay, I yeah. saw. I saw it. Yeah, and like to me, it's like. It's the sequel to the first one. Like, that's all Right, it is. exactly. Yeah. They're very self aware of But they kind of pl- yeah, they play the Exactly. Off of the self awareness. And, and, like, uh, probably the funniest part is, like, the ending where they have all the, all the references oh to that God. next movie. It was just non stop. Ridiculous. Like yes. Three or four minutes more movies. Yeah. So, yeah. does that mean they're not doing any I think more? They are doing the 22 Jump Street. Oh, really? Okay. I have no idea. I, I think they are, though. Okay. Because yeah. I wasn't sure if that like, ending would make it seem like they're not. But yeah, exactly. That Like, it implies that, like, like, we're making fun of, of, like, how many movies are made and, like... They, they purposely make the third one bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So How, yeah. like... I don't know. How, like, existential would that be if they, like, made a third one and purposely mm-hmm. made it really shitty? And, like, they're totally aware of it. I don't know. That'd or, be, like, they just gave it a budget of, like, $2 million dollars yeah. just so that, like, you know, they don't really lose much on it. And they're just yeah. like, ah, 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 ah. Like, I don't know, really yeah, funny. just really. I'd still go see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they could still make a shit ton of money. Yeah. yeah. There you okay. go. All right. What was what was the next thing we wanted to talk about? I we wanted to talk about Planet. I want to talk about Planet Apes because I just want to say I'm a huge Planet Apes fan. I think both of you know. I uh, yes, it. I'm aware. And Answer Doctor Zayas clip. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. And the uh, uh, break dancing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huge, huge fan. Um, and you know. Okay, so ignoring ignoring the original five movies, which sort of get right. worse as they go along, but I've seen I've seen oh, everything. Yeah. Um, Tim Burton. Spoilers. Tim Burton remake was interesting, <laughs> but kind of shitty at the same time. Like I think I think they wanted to do a whole new series, like, probably, like, and it just didn't take off because yeah. the movie didn't do well. I want to say one thing about the Tim Burton one. When I was a kid, uh, it was like me and my brother Stephen were staying were staying with my. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Merrill and Auntie in New Jersey, like, one night, and it was, like, my parents weren't going to be there, so, you know, my aunt and uncle were like, we're going to do something fun with you kids, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to see the new Planet of the Apes movie, and uh, we saw the movie, and it was terrible, and uh, so I just want to apologize to my Uncle Merrill and Auntie for taking me to that movie. (laughs) So sorry. It was, was like, whatever, eight-year-old Chris aware that it was really shitty? I, like, was aware that it was, like... Not enjoyable. It was weird. Like, I remember, like, I remember my thought process was, like, this is kind of weird. Did you see, have you, did you see the original movie before you saw that? Or did you there, just... I went through a phase... Did you just see there was a monkey movie? No, I went it. through a phase as a kid where I, like, was really into all the original movies. In fact, the, another story of Chris Griff's past is that when I went through the phase where I was really into the movies... I, like, saw, like, the first two or something like that, and I wanted to, like, go to... You remember Blockbuster Kids? I wanted to go to, <laughs> I wanted to go to Blockbuster and, like, get them all and, like, watch them. And then I did something bad, and I got in trouble, and my mom was like, we're not renting you those movies. And I was like, ah! And then, like, that day on uh, whatever movie channel... They were they were running a marathon, <laughs> and I watched it. And I remember my mom coming into the room and being like, Son of a bitch! <laughs> like just like so, <laughs> like the the greatest loophole in history. Yeah. <laughs> it's on TV, like <laughs> like you know, we didn't read it. <laughs> I have no power over this. <laughs> but I'm okay, sorry so for that big that, second. Uh, that's that's fine. So yeah, that sort of flopped for them, and then they 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 dropped it for a while, and then they decided to re they rebooted it again. They said, okay, <laughs> we're going to do this origin story similar to. Four and five. So the the two movies that they made, I always forget which is which. The Dawn and Rise. Yeah. They the the newest Rise one, is the first. They, Rise is with James Franco. Okay. This one okay. did not. And yeah. So Rise Dawn. Rise is basically a re, is a remake of the fourth Planet of the Apes movie, uh-huh. which is um, what is it, Conquest. Conquest. And then and then um, and then the, the most recent one, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, was a remake of the really really shitty uh, Battle of the Planet of the Apes, which is the fifth movie. That, the fifth movie is pretty awful. I don't even the movie think, is pretty bad. I really like Conquest. Yeah, like, Conquest, I really like Conquest, Up to Conquest. I, in some ways, I think Conquest is better even than the sequel, even than Planet Apes 2, in, in certain respects. Oh, it's The City Beneath? Yeah. The Planet, the yeah, that one's that, also pretty weird. Yeah, that, it's weird. Like, some parts of it I really like, but then other parts just, like, go off the rails. Uh-huh. So, a lot of... Uh, so, the fourth movie is definitely either the second or, or, or third best Planet Apes movie. And so, um, 
when when they remade the James Franco one, Rise of yeah. the Planet Apes, I was like, it was like enjoyable. I thought it was gonna yeah. be terrible. So when I saw it, it no, was, definitely I, better than I thought. I, w- I was very pleasantly surprised. But again, it wasn't like the greatest movie I'd ever seen. Yeah, but it was enjoyable. So when I went back to see. Um, there was Dawn. proof that Draco Malfoy will be forever typecast as a douchebag. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Poor Tom Felton. Like, even yeah. if call him Draco Malfoy just yeah. proves that. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know his name. Yeah. I'm so yeah. thanks for that. Um, and then uh, the, I, I went to see this movie while I was in New York during my internship. I went by myself. I was just like, okay, i got to see the new one because I was pretty happy with the other one. Yeah. And boy, did it blow my mind. Like, it was so good. Yeah. Like, Way like uh, you know a grade above um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Absolutely, Rise of the Planet of the Apes was a movie that like when it first was like announced and trailers were coming out, I was like, I don't understand the point of this. The whole point of Planet of the Apes is it's a twist at the end, and you don't know that it's Earth. Like, why would they tell this? Yeah, why story? bother explaining? Yeah, I don't like. Is, are they dumbing it down? And then like came out whatever DVDs. My mom brought it home. I was like. Yeah, watch your shit. I watched it. Mom. And it was like... So your mom like, brought you it was like, Planet of the Apes DVD. <laughs> it was like, that's a movie I would watch on TV or on DVD, and I would yeah. be like, okay, I watched this movie. Sure. And it happened, and I don't really need to see it again. But it was enjoyable during the two hours. Yeah. But then this one just like blew me away how much better it was. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll definitely watch this again. Like, it's... It's so. I, I'm I, I'm very much looking forward to watching it a second time. Yeah. Um, like sort of knowing how everything turns out. Like yeah. I want to watch it again and sort of pick up on other stuff. But yeah, it's it's very, very clever. And we we talked a bit about it because, um, yeah. you know, there it's it has a big sort of cast of up characters, yeah. and it's pretty split between ape characters and human characters. Yeah. The two and there are good factions. apes and bad apes. There's bad humans, there's bad apes. So, like, it's very gray. The whole movie's gray, which I like. I like yeah. that. It's not like the apes are bad, the humans are good, or the humans are bad, and the apes right. are good. Which, the first movie was sort of like, you know, oh, the apes are trying to get their freedom or whatever. I don't know. Like, Yeah, it was like an understandable, yeah. like, what they were doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, this movie, it's like, I sympathize for the humans and their situation, their plight. I sympathize with the apes and their plight. Right. So it's like, when they're coming into conflict, it's sort of tragic. And you feel that tragedy where it's like, you know, they're going into conflict when they, they're they trying to, they both want to live in peace, but the conflict is sort of inevitable. And they have yeah. forces on both sides pushing them towards towards right. war. Right. And it's it's just really great. Like Yeah, and every, every, like, action in the movie is justified by an action earlier on and has consequences yeah. later on in the movie. And I... Everything I, builds. I just, nothing is done for nothing, you know. Yeah, it... it it was a very tight story, you know. It, it really just worked very well. Uh, yeah, and then the whole like uh, eight, you know, motion capture. Oh, and circus. They were fantastic. You know, craziness. I heard. Um, I you both know I did not yeah. see the film. I really want to. Yeah, I, I strongly but recommend it. I was <laughs> Giamatti seal of approval <laughs> ten times. Yeah. Uh, like Dan said, like I saw the first one. You know, I liked it. Yeah. But you know, it it's a, it's a DVD movie. Yeah, it's fine. So when the second one came out, like, I didn't, you know, rush to go see it. And then, like, after it came out, all this buzz happened that this movie was super dope. Yeah. And I was like, That's what made me go movie. see it, because I wasn't going to run out and see it, but then I heard good things. Yeah. I'm like, I should give yeah. it a try. Like, let's go see it. But um, just a point that I thought about from the first one is that my, my favorite part of Rise of the Planet of the Apes is, um, I mean, minus Tom Felton saying, get your paws off me, you damn idiot, because it's kind of weird. But he says that, and then Caesar goes, no, and it's like the first time he talks. So I remember that, even in the theaters, I thought, okay, that part's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And, I like, is there anything like that in the sequel that has the same impact? Because like, you already know he talks. Well, the, the talking is actually very minimal, and I think they did, they yeah. did that on purpose. Anytime, which I, yeah, that anytime good. Yeah. the apes speak, it is something... Not, I'm not going to say profound. But it's noteworthy. to like, It is, yeah, yeah important to the story. Because most of the time when they communicate with each other, they communicate in, like, grunts and, like, sign language. They're, sign still doing, language. Yeah, they're still doing sign language for the most part. Yeah. yeah. So and when they do You're speak, reading subtitles, yeah. There were subtitles? Yeah. <laughs> I watched the whole thing without subtitles. Really? Yeah. Wow, you missed, right, like, half the so movie. I, guess... I still thought it was fantastic. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's amazing. Well, now I have to rewatch the movie. I, I, I really want to watch it without subtitles now to see what it's, it's fantastic. like. fantastic. Imagine it's like you just start this whole thing. Like, yeah. oh my god, watch uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes without subtitles. It's way better. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it just so made as much sense to me. When they, when they spoke, that was when you heard, you know, the They're story. Right, yeah. No, but they to me. no, they do sign language. You got yeah. yeah rewatch it with subtitles. I have to now. So I'd be like funny. an idiot, but yeah. I don't know what I should do now. Yeah, <laughs> just have to, both. Uh, yeah, yeah, just have the, both screens going. <laughs> I don't see the stuff. Oh make yeah. Any sense. Well, watch, watch it. Watch. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about it too far. <laughs> um, I just. I, I just, it reminds me like of a thing where like these people are watching two movies at the same time on, on different screens. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I can't believe there were subtitles. Yeah, that's so yeah. funny. The community, like, that's amazing. They had subtitles in the first movie too, and they're doing the sign language because they very assume, brief. They, it's only like once. Yeah, but they they assume you don't know sign language, so they're putting subtitles yeah. so you understand what the apes are saying to each other. Well, yeah. apes don't speak the same sign language. Oh wait, I guess Caesar would. Yeah, he Caesar because he's, oh, he's talking to the other monkey, and he knows. learned it from James Franco. So right, he learned it from James Franco, and he taught and he's... the other one. So they, yeah, they, okay, they, no, like, you're right. They're... I was thinking like, oh, monkey sign language. That's like really different. Where it's like no, they speak when they like, smile, and they do like or whatever. No. sign language. No, yeah, they 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 teach it to each other. Right, right. They have they have like a primitive ape society. Yeah, going Caesar on. teaches. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, definitely watch it. Strongly recommend it. Um, but who? Um, I mean, I know Andy Serkis. Yeah, but it's uh, Jason Gar- Clark. Gary Jason Clark, Oldman, Gary Oldman, Jason Clark. Jason Clark is uh, he was a guy in Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so he can. I mean, no offense, man, but I did not like him in Zero Dark Thirty, and I don't think I've seen him in much else. But I really didn't like him in that movie, and I remember like he was more of a profound character than I thought he would be, and I was like, who the hell is this guy? And then when I saw the first trailer for Don. And I saw, like, I think in the trailer, he's like, I need to speak to Caesar! That is not in the movie. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, I don't remember. But anyways, like, the movie. I was like, ah, oh, this guy, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, is he good in that movie? Because I, yeah, like, he, never he's seen a, yeah, he's something like, I liked him in. He's like the Caesar on the Parallel, human Parallel, yeah. 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 He's okay. like the main protagonist on the human yeah, side. Yeah. 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 Like, and Caesar uh, dominates the movie for a large part of it. Well, that's good. He should. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, on the human side, like, he's the relatable yeah. mm-hmm. sort of, you know, good guy, I guess. Although, so. I am super happy about Don. Andy Serkis is the first name. He's the, the yeah. lead. Good. Which yeah. is fantastic. I, he needs, uh, like, uh, I, well, there's a YouTube series. Well, people know who he is. I think he's getting a certain degree. I think this has helped him so much. Yeah, yeah and he's, we know that he's in the new Star Wars. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it's like, he should be recognized. It's, it's sort of tragic, because what he does often doesn't reveal himself and, you know, right. the magic And he, he has it. done movies oh, where it's him. Avengers, too. Yeah. yeah. What? He's like a, he was like a supervisor thing. I don't know if he's in it. No, he's in the new Avengers. Or the, not the first one. He's in the new one. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's just like, Mocap stuff. No, he's a car. He's a guy in the trailer. Like they show a guy who's got like weird hair for like half a second, and it's him. That is him. No, oh, I didn't know that. I gotta rewatch it. All right. We did this weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember you mentioning that. So. Oh, I don't know if I, I don't know if it I came up. Yeah, but anyway, gonna I know he's like himself. helping on the movie, and I know he's doing stuff in Star Wars, and like yeah, that. It's like you're in like all the biggest franchises right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because he's like the only guy who does what he does. He or he's the best at it. For sure. Yeah. Or yeah. the most recognized at least. Right. Yeah. Well, There's, like I mean, it's, it's becoming more common. Like you know, The Hobbit is using motion capture for mm-hmm. like their CGI stuff, and like you know, it's it's a good way to to sort of bring uh, yeah. a more human touch to it. Right. Right. Um, right. And it's just a just like a general recognition of this, you know, art. Form. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a new frontier. Because yeah. it is performance capture, you can do 100 takes and they can match the, the best voice, the best motion. Right. Or even fix you in post. And, like, I think that is sort of what is artificial about it. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they did, they actually do all these actions and the, the facial expressions and the voices. Yeah. You know, you, you did it, you performed it at some point, just someone else helped perfect. Yeah. Picked yeah. all the perfect parts and put that there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a more extreme version of like you know what the editor does. The editor's gonna go through yeah. and he's gonna you know he's gonna touch pick up things best. and he's gonna sure. he's gonna pick the best shots and the best audio and 
that, you, that that's how movies are made, you know. And yeah. it, it's just it's just a more extreme version of that where you have even more yeah. effects being put absolutely. On. But uh, I you know I just just recommend it. You know I don't want to talk too much too much longer about it. But yeah. I was very good movie with or without. So yeah, definitely go see with it. Or yeah, I will see it. Yeah, let me let me know if you watch it. I didn't, I'm so I, I don't even, know what to do now. I don't even know if that's an option to like turn off the subtitles. I, I don't know. Like you were yeah, set on this. Yeah. I, so, uh, one one other thing I like to say about Andy Serkis is that um, he's kind of like he's kind of taken the role of what back in the day Kevin Peter Hall was. If you don't know, Kevin Peter Hall was like the biggest. Um, monster guy in yeah. movies like he was the predator he was harry and harry and the hendersons which is like a <laughs> like a nice. nicer role uh, but i've seen because predator is my favorite movie ever I love predator. Yes. and so i've seen a lot of interviews where people said that like you know if there were other people who were just like oh i'll wear the monster thing and i'll just go like this and they back in the day people said that kevin peter hall was like he was the only person who was like a super duper actor to like go into who's yeah. willing to just not phone it in, right? Basically, yeah. Who well, would just he like, specializes in being a monster, in yeah. being a monster and bringing like, it to life. If yeah. you see Harry and the Hendersons, like his facial expressions, you know, and even in Predator, like just certain things that he did, his just movements and brought that. everything way more to life. And I think Andy Serkis is kind of like a successor to that, but in a very yeah. different realm. Yeah. I think you get even more recognition for that sort of thing. Yes. Because he, he's, he's not just doing the movements, he's doing, like you said, the facial expressions right. and the voice or whatever, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. he's doing to yeah. it, you know. There's a YouTube series I watch called Cinema Sins, which just, like, takes popular movies and is like, everything wrong with this movie in blank minutes or whatever. Nit- nitpicking. Yeah. Right, nitpicking. And it's humorous, but yeah. one, uh, every movie that has Andy Serkis in it, they go, Andy Serkis wasn't nominated for an Oscar for this role. <laughs> it's like, bing! And I, I, I don't know, that's, I just... That's another thing funny. I want to talk about. So, pretty recently, all the studios put out their For Your Consideration uh, websites. Yeah. So, on Fox's page, they have Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Of course, yeah. Which is great, because it's a movie they made this year, and so they should send it out for consideration. Because, why not? What can you lose? Yeah. Um, so, under that... Uh, you know, under there, like, for your consideration, there's, like, best picture, director, you know, the, all the all the typical things. But there is no lead actor in that movie, according to them. Which is disheartening, but it puts Andy Serkis at a better playing field, sort of. He's competing with the supporting actor. Do you think, do you think that's an intentional thing, where it's like, we, <laughs> we legitimately believe that... It is sort of an ensemble movie where there's a lot it, of different It characters. definitely is an ensemble. Like, where it's like, we think we, we don't think he, he's lead enough to be considered a lead actor, or do they think, are they trying to pedge it where, like, we want Andy him to be... Andy Serkis playing a monkey can't be a lead. Yeah, yeah. Or, well, it could are be... Are they trying to get him into a better category where he's more likely to win? Is that is that is it strategic? It, it could be strategic, but it's like, you know, Jason Clark, Gary Oldman, the guy who plays the evil monkey, I think his name is Tony, Toby Kebble? Something like that. Yeah. But he was also very good in it. Yeah. Um, they're all supporting actors in the film. So I just thought it was an interesting choice. It, it, I think it does put him at a better advantage to be considered for these things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not, I'm, after watching the movie, I'm not sure if he is the lead. Because if you're going to face it on screen time, it's like between him and Jason Clark's character. Yeah. Like uh, the movie deals with, a lot of it deals with Caesar and... and you know, the impact of his decisions right. and everything. Right. But, like, how much time, he, you know, he's not, like, always on screen. Right. You know, and, right. He, and it's not like he is personally driving all the action that's right. happening. A lot of it is out of his control as well. Right. See, so. in this movie, I, I've read something about this where they, they approached Dawn as a, this is, like, their godfather. Yeah. So, like, Caesar would be the Don Corleone oh, yeah. character of the movie. Where he's not in it for the entire time, but but his influence is every felt his influence is felt throughout the movie, and he's a very powerful and respected character within the within world. the universe. And then, uh, you know, his, his everything that happens affects him in some way. I would love to picture like the monkey Caesar like petting a cat and being like, <laughs> "I'll make you an I, I like <laughs> I. 
Brando. Guarantee you, look at Caesar's face and then go back and like watch Brando. Watch Brando. It, it's definitely Brando inspired. No, exactly. That face is no, the face. That's the face he makes through the whole I movie. I know. It's kind of funny de- when I think about be, it now. It has to be Brando inspired. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very possible. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. Now, I won't. I won't be able to see Don and Ian's there because I'm just gonna laugh. Like it's well, no, and that, like that goes back to Godfather. Whenever he spoke, it was always something. Yeah. Profound. Sure, yeah. 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 Yeah, it was something, he always had something important to say. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on, because we've been talking about this yeah. for a while. Um, so, what was, the, what was the last one we wanted to talk about? Uh, well, I guess going and off is Jason Clark and Dawn. Um, yeah. He has been cast as, this is kind of a future. Well, yeah. wasn't there one more time we wanted to talk about? No, I think that was it. Oh, is that no. it? Okay. Okay, so we're going into the, into the future of movies. So the future. The future. future. Um, Jason Clark has been cast as John Connor in the new Terminator movie. Okay. Which the trailer just came out for. Which I watched briefly once. So, once. Yeah. To me, it just looks like a remake. Kind of. It's like a, well, we know it's a reboot. Because it is it like soft reboot, like Days of Future Past, where it's like, Oh, yeah, it is totally a sequel, but also we're just going to fix some stuff. I think, yes, because it, what it's a time it seems, travel movie. There's going to be inherent contradictions that you obvious, have to ignore, I guess. But I think it, like this movie's going off of that. Like, uh, the future past. No, it's... <clears throat> so it looks like a remake of the first one. Right. Kyle Reese is getting sent back to save Sarah Connor. Yeah. And, uh, but... You know, instead of in the first one when he gets there, you know, she has no idea that there is a war or anything like that. Yeah, in she's just thrown into whatever. She's just thrown into it. And this one, from the trailer, she's pumped and ready to go. And she's like, oh, we already killed that first Terminator. And he's like, what's going on? And in the trailer, she says, the past, you know, the, the time where that was happening doesn't exist. Now, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know how they're going to explain it at all. Yeah. I don't... It's, it gives a reason to have another movie. But it, it will have another movie. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it'll be action packed. I mean, uh, the governor is back. I, I, I don't know how I feel about the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger to, like, acting. Because I'm pretty. I, I was just. I mentioned this to Dan the other day. I'm pretty sure the last movie he was in before he became governor was Terminator 3. If it wasn't the last one, it was one of the last ones. That he, I think it was Terminator 3. I think he had, like, a. Really tiny role in like that Jackie Chan movie, uh, Eighty Days Around the World or something. Yeah, like but like that was like his last major. Oh, shit, that was fucking a hundred years ago. It was like yeah, he's been the governor for a lot. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um. Anyway, so like when they made that movie, that I thought that was, I thought naively that uh, this is the last major time we're going to see Arnold Schwarzenegger in a movie. Probably do cameos or whatever in the future, but like this is his last like starring role. Boy, were we wrong with that. And now uh, he's in like every fucking movie. You know, I'm a okay with it because I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't. I, I think '80s action is just all. That's what you're about. Yeah. Is that a correct? I mean, what's wrong with '80s? Action? I'm just pointing I, it out. I don't know. Like, like it's the same problem I have with Sylvester Stallone coming back. Same problem I have with the, them casting the original actors in Star Wars. It's like I don't want to see the same people again as old people in these same movies. Like. Once you once you reach a certain age, you can't play the same roles that you did when you were a young person. Clearly, like, they can't. But, I mean, <laughs> they I can do what they want. I don't know. Yeah. It's not, it's to me, it's not the same. And like, I'm just constantly taken out of it because, like, okay, I'm gonna watch this new Terminator movie. Why is he old? Why do we have old Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie? Why don't we have young, awesome Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, I don't understand. Like, it takes me out of the movie because it's like, you know, why can't they just cast a new Terminator? Why can't we pass the torch? We have to live in the past of. Um, we have to live in the shadow of what has come before. I don't know. Why do they have to keep making another Rocky movie? Because I guess that's a good idea. I don't know. Well, that was, you know, Stallone just wanted, I guess he wanted to do it. And, then, you know, I, the movie, If you, I mean, if you want to know why Stallone feels like he has to come back into the acting role, just watch Rocky Balboa because it's very, like, parallel. I've never like seen him, it myself. Him going back into fighting in Rocky Balboa while being so old is extremely parallel to like him wanting to act again. Yeah. You know? 
But I'm not. I'm not saying old people can't be in movies. I'm just saying like, there's a certain. Yeah, moment. the movies, old people. Like, 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 you're wrinkly. Like, like imagine my. Like, I imagine I think the, I said this last week. Old people are gross. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like did. like imagine like Michael Caine or Morgan Freeman were like trying to be action stars. It's like no, they're like yeah. They, they why is like, Michael Caine James Bond again? You know. Or, yeah, for the yeah, first time. Yeah, like why you know why isn't Sean Connery you know why does you know it's like in Indiana Jones uh, the Last Crusade like imagine obviously I'm not saying that that Sean Connery was Indiana Jones but imagine, like Sean Connery was James Bond and like he was in like these awesome protagonist roles in right. the past like imagine if he just like shoved Harrison Ford aside like I'm gonna be the action star of this movie even though you know it would make sense. yeah it would make sense because he's 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 the yeah, older Harrison guy four is old too. But now, now he is, but not old. not in Indiana Jones, not in the third Indiana Jones movie. Indiana, oh, okay. in the Last Crusade, Indiana Jones is he carries all the weight. Not only is he, you know, saving, you know, he's saving himself, but he's also saving his da- his dad. Yes, and, but and I think I think you overestimate that. Like uh, this new Terminator movie has Amelia Clark, who is uh, Daenerys Targaryen. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I'm okay with that. I'm in love with her. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah. Jai, Jai, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Jay Courtney is yeah, yeah. Jay, is that right? I guess. Um, and he's playing Kyle Reese, and he's like a new, like young action guy. He was in. Um, he's gonna be in Suicide Squad as Captain Boomerang. Yeah, he's gonna be in Suicide Squad. He was just he was in that movie Jack Reacher. He was a bad guy, and he was in. Come on, there's one more movie. I can't think of it. I can't. I can't just put it in that. My, my 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 whole point is like uh, yeah, uh, it's good that they have those <laughs> those new, like it, it wouldn't be feasible to have any of those characters be the original actors. Though right. That's not going to happen. But I'm saying the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger is still there. He's the Terminator in the Terminator movie. He's still sort of like the reason you go see it. Right? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. yeah, you know you you don't go to see Terminator to see Sarah Connor like flop around. Like you go to see Terminator do awesome Terminator thing. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, have you seen any of the Terminator movies? Because she doesn't exactly flop around. But, but she's she's out of her league. She's you know she's always sort of in. On oh, the first one and the second one, she's kick ass. She knows what she's doing. I, I guess I don't know. She, again, there's still there's still same tropes of her like running away from. She's still not up to the task of fighting this new Terminator, the Liquid Terminator. I mean, it, it, even who would be up to the task I, of it, fighting it, a Liquid that's, Terminator? That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying like they're the human characters. They're always vulnerable and they're the targets. Yeah. And they have the Terminator, who is either the bad guy or also the good guy protecting, and like that's sort of the, the formula they set up. So like, I'm not I'm not detracting from like Sarah Connor's like awesome like in the second movie she does a lot of cool things, but like they're the human characters who are vulnerable, and like I don't care about them as much as I care about like the awesome stuff that the Terminator does. Arnold Schwarzenegger in those movies is awesome and badass, and that's what I go yeah. to see them for. But like I'm not excited about going to see old Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I, I I don't know about you. And this could be different for everyone. I, it doesn't excite me. I, I get no excitement out of going to see old Arnold Schwarzenegger try to recreate what was amazing in the past. You know? Yeah. I could just go watch Terminator 2 again. I'd be happy. Yeah. I would prefer... Yeah. I would prefer a human person playing Terminator as opposed to like all the infinite robots or whatever the fuck yeah, was in know. Salvation. I don't know. I didn't even see that movie, so I don't. Well, know. in Salvation, they kind of they did the thing where um, they made the T eight hundred like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it was like C they like CG like young Arnold Schwarzenegger face, and it was just like I think they're doing that again in this movie too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but not for his role. Yeah, yeah. Which is even weirder. Cause it's even less. I don't. It, it, it makes, makes even, even less, less sense. Cause yeah, like, it's like makes, a no, Tron makes, legacy with the Jeff, like, the young Jeff Bridges. Why? Yeah, how, why makes, did he age? Why did he age? That I age? don't know why he aged. That's yeah. a question I have too. But it makes sense that um, like you could have just ignore it and just have him be the only Terminator and just don't address it. And yeah, like, okay, he's old. Like, I get it. Like, you know. But no, it makes sense. Him look old because he's trying to blend in. Yeah, I don't know. It whatever. makes sense for the story that there would be other Arnold Schwarzenegger looking things because like when. Skynet like mass produces these they all T800s. Like, they all look like the perfect human, which is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course. Well, naturally. They, they, no, it would probably be Tom Cruise, but the perfect <laughs> k- killing. He's a little know, short. My hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the perfect like badass, I guess, person is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Can, can't speak English very well. <laughs> Give me your perfect. Give me your address there. Yeah. The, the least conspicuous yeah. person in the world. Uh, okay. 
Terminator, I think we discussed that. Yeah, one last thing. Yeah, okay, we're, we're going long. Here. I want to talk about Spectre. The new, you know, oh yes, the new James Bond movie. Sure, sure. And yeah. mostly, I want to just talk about how they announced it. See, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know because I, I heard it was coming out. That's all I heard, and I, I, there was some buzz around. There's it. always the oh yeah, James Bond movie's coming out. Yeah, naturally, this is the 24th James Bond movie, so it's just like yeah, at this point, I know, obviously there's right, one. Right, like works. when someone. I, I, Sorry, I lost English there for a second. But I just <laughs> always... <laughs> I just always assume there's a new James Bond movie coming out eventually. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, eventually. It's gotten to that point. They figured it out. You know, cast it's the new James like Bond the Doctor Who every... of movies. It's like, you know another one's going to come out. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. You know? yeah. It's okay, cast the new guy. It yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. It's no it's one whatever, cares. Yeah. Um, Michael Fassbender. <laughs> Please don't get me started. Okay. Uh, that'd be cool. That would be um, so yeah, the the way they announced it, they announced like everything relevant to the movie for any type of movie goer. You know, they have like the casual, just action fans, like, oh, here's the name of the movie, and here's the car, and Daniel Craig. Yeah. That's all you really care about. Exactly. And then they went through, named the whole cast, which includes Christoph Waltz, which I'm so excited for, because I love him. He's and incredible. Uh, I think That's Dave Bautista is another just notable name. That see that was I heard about that too, <clears throat> and like him and Guardians fine, and he's isn't he also in Suicide Squad? Or is it, no, no. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is. is. I saw something else with him. Whatever. Maybe it was this. But I remember thinking like, okay, like he did Guardians and it's fine. But like him going into a James Bond movie, I'm like, I'm interested. Yeah. Interested. Yeah, but uh, it seemed weird. Yeah, it does seem weird. We'll see. But I guess yeah. I, 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 I'm interested. Guardians has me has piqued my interest in him. So, um, so uh, you're a big fan of the the new, like yeah. Daniel Craig James Bond. I'm movies. a really big fan of the new Daniel Craig movies. Uh, Quantum Solace, not that good, but just like still a fun action movie. Yeah, like I. But Casino I, Royale, and Skyfall. Every t- every time, like yeah, Skyfall. I saw when I went. I see, I've seen all of them up to this point. And, like, Skyfall was, was probably the one that I was most... Like, I, I sort of had the, the fullest conception of what was going on. Because I always feel very confused in these James Bond movies. Like, I, I follow stories pretty well. I just feel like they they, can, they tend to get a bit convoluted at times. They do. They and, do. like, you know, like is it, they don't make it easy for you to follow necessarily what's happening. Yeah. Or, or, or understand, why are we having this chase scene? Like, I just know they have to have a chase scene because... It's a James, it's Bond, James movie. Bond movie, but like, there's no you know instigation of it, or right, right. But well, that's sort of why. the that's like how this series has been, for the most part. It's just it's it's less mindless than it has been in previous. It's more grounded. It's definitely better movie making. But that's that's what I don't like about the new James Bond it's series. It's less mindless. Like like the first the first uh, one, Casino Royale. <laughs> Yeah. I was like super excited for it. like oh new James Bond here we go and uh, you know other James Bond movies are like this bad guy's got an island with a uh, ray gun to make the sun explode yeah. and this guy's <laughs> got a missile so- like there's always a missile silo and then I saw <laughs> Casino Royale and it was like they're playing poker the guy had a scar though you knew <laughs> he, he had a scar he had a like, scar that's how you know he's the bad guy but that that is what that book was about they played poker I know it's very intense but like that's why I didn't didn't care for that movie, so I didn't see Quantum Solace. I like Skyfall, but it's also like but way more grounded. That, like the, that's the climax of that movie is just like. But that was the thing. A lot of guns in the house about Skyfall. That that it was setting up. It, it was like going back. It, it came full circle. Like it, it was going back to the original James Bond movies with mm-hmm. M and Money Penny yeah, and Q yeah. and all that stuff. <clears throat> Spoilers. Money Penny shoots him. It's, it's so funny. Oh, well. <laughs> and he was okay. Yeah, he was yeah. fine. And so that, then you have, like, the evil mastermind villain on an island in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. He just is evil. Right. Yeah. But that's why I liked Skyfall, because I was like, yeah, get right. back to and what that's, I want. that's what this is going to be more yeah, of. And that's yeah, why I'm so excited, excited especially when you have Christoph Waltz, and he plays <gasps> the best villain. Christoph Waltz is going to be so good. Yeah. He's, I like any movie, he's just going to be so good. Oh, but th- then going back to what I was saying before, they have, you know, the general stuff. Here's the car, James Bond. Mm-hmm. And then they, they mm-hmm. went through the whole cast, and they even announced, like, the entire crew, like, the bigger names of the crew. Mm-hmm. And it was just, like, 
for people who are like cinephiles and stuff, it was like, oh, this is good. This is definitely going to be a good production, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's Sam Mendes again, yep. who did Skyfall and American Beauty, which were my favorite movies ever. American Beauty is incredible. Yeah. yeah. And the same writers from Skyfall. So you know a lot of the same teams involved. So if you like, like, essentially a lot of the same crew from if, Skyfall. If you like Skyfall, you'll probably like this one. Yeah, and then this one, they have the uh, cinematographer who did Interstellar. Oh, really? Cool. So the last James Bond movie, Skyfall, got nominated for an Oscar for cinematography because it was fucking beautiful. And so this one should be just the same. Or better, maybe. Or better. Who knows? Well, no, maybe James Bond going to outer space and it will look amazing. Yeah. Gotta save my daughter <laughs> and the world <laughs> from corn and, <laughs> and England. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's all I wanted to talk about. Dude, okay, James. Okay, was, we went we went excited. rather long, but maybe, maybe we'll make it. Maybe, maybe we make a two part release. Like we'll charge extra for it. It'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it'll be one episode. Yeah, but that, that first part is gonna be so boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one's gonna care about that. Yeah. It feels like a part one. Yeah. All right. Well, we that's should, it. We should, right, like, we should do a little tribute. We should tribute. do a little, little goodbye. Yeah. Because it's Chris's last episode. Yeah, he's graduating, leaving us for good. Moving on to bigger and better things. It's you may not have seen The Last of Me, <laughs> but no, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess if you come back, we'll do one. Yeah. We'll, we'll edit you. Maybe <laughs> maybe Parade Day or something. We'll have one. Yeah, I'll we'll just get wasted. I'll tell you. I'll be like, I'll be like I'm, man, Steel's a great... <laughs> Oh, we'll we'll just CGI CGI you in a or, young Chris Pratt, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Andy Serkis playing me. <laughs> yeah, you know I think Man of Steel is a great film. <laughs> that was my Chris Pratt. <laughs> just, just the most animated possible. I really like that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll work on that. But right. goodbye, mm-hmm. Chris. Hey, it's been good. Hey, good time. It's been pleasure. Certainly good with this game. <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah have a happy new year and Christmas and uh, these two guys will uh, see you later bye everyone bye bye Scott <laughs> <laughs>